Twingate might just be the VPN replacement that you didn't know you need, but you don't have to believe me, just hear me out. How about limiting traffic down to individual devices on specific ports for specific users? Wanna expose everything? Set up access for your entire subnet and everything will be accessible. What about ensuring client devices have certain security requirements before connecting? Can your VPN do that? Let's talk about that VPN for a second. If the VPN server goes down for any reason, do you have high availability set up to ensure that you can access your local network? Probably not. What if I told you that you could set up Twingate, have all of these security features completely free for up to five users and 10 remote network. Plus you can configure it in less than 10 minutes using any server running Docker. To be honest and transparent, this video is sponsored by Twingate, but in the time I've used it, I've learned to love it and I think you will too. Thanks to Twingate for sponsoring this video. So right off the bat, Twingate is not a VPN. It's a zero trust network. And for all intents and purposes, when you're actually using it, it's extremely similar to a VPN. You basically connect to Twingate and then you're able to access all of your local devices or really anything that you actually configure. But the difference is you don't have to utilize port forwarding. You have a bunch of cool security features and everything is managed through their web interface. So we are gonna jump right in to configuring the Twingate connector. And what I first wanna show you is the actual controller. So everything you do inside of Twingate is actually managed inside of the controller. So what I did up to this point was I went in, created a user account, and I created a network. The network for me is WonderTech. So whatever you specify here is what you'll need to use in later steps. So just take note of that because we're gonna need it later. The only other thing to know is while you can do this completely free, it is gonna ask you for a business name, but you can put anything there. You can use it for individual use. So put anything you want, sign up for the account. If you have any trouble with that, I have written instructions in the description that walks through the entire process as well as the sign up process. So as soon as you get inside of the actual controller, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a connector. So inside of this connector tab here, you're gonna see that we have no connectors configured at this point. But in order to configure a connector, we actually have to configure a remote network. So inside of the remote networks tab, we're gonna click remote network, and then you have a bunch of different options. This is a cool thing about Twingate is that not only can you run it on any server running Docker, if you have any cloud instances, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, you can configure that as well. But for now, we're just gonna do on-premise, and I'm just gonna label this as home, and then I'm gonna add this remote network, and this is gonna be for my home network. So what we're gonna do is actually click into this home network, and then what we're gonna do is deploy the connector. So what you will see here is you have a bunch of different options, but what we're gonna do is use Docker. So what you have to do is actually generate the tokens that we're gonna use. So you can click generate tokens, and then it's gonna ask you to authenticate, and you'll have to go in and sign in with your account. And after you sign in with your account, you are gonna have your access and refresh tokens. So now what we have to do is actually configure our Docker Compose file. Now inside of that Docker Compose file, you're gonna need three things. You're gonna need your network name, the access token, and the refresh token. Now inside of the written instructions, I have the exact Docker Compose file that you're gonna need, but what I'm gonna do is head back to our Synology NAS, and then I'm gonna open up File Station, and inside of the Docker folder, what I'm gonna do is create a folder named Twingate. This is just gonna be where our Docker Compose file is. So after that's done, we can head back to Container Manager, select Create, and then we're gonna call this Twingate. And then in the path here, we're just gonna select that Twingate folder. We're gonna switch this to Create, and then we have our Docker Compose file. Now there's a few things we're gonna to have to change here. The tenant name is going to be the actual tenant name inside of Twingate. So whatever you specified when you configured it, minus WonderTech, you're gonna to have to use that. The next thing we're gonna copy is this access token, and we're gonna paste it in right here, and then we are gonna copy this refresh token, and we are gonna paste it in right here. So at this point, we have our full Docker Compose file created. All you need is those three things, and you can then go ahead and actually create this, and it's gonna then pull down the Twingate connector uh, Docker container. It's gonna take a few minutes to download everything, but as soon as it's done, you'll see that the Twingate project is complete. The only thing I want to point out here is in this container tab, this might change to a yellow color. Um, I reached out to Twingate. They said that it's a problem with how container manager is actually reading the container. So if you see that for any reason, if it reports as unhealthy, it's okay. It will work. 
Um, just something to take note of. But after you configure that, if you head back to TwinGate and you go back to your connectors, what you'll see is that your first connector is green and that indicates that your connector is connected to the controller. I know it sounds confusing, but the point is everything is connected and it's working. So the order in which I think that you should configure this is in the team section here, you are going to have all of your users. So you have two ways that you can manage this. You can actually go in and create groups. So you can specify a new group here. I just created a new group. And then you can invite all of your users. When we create a resource, we are actually gonna permission out that resource to individual groups. And that's why I recommend doing it in this order. But as soon as you configure your groups and your users, what we can do is head back to the networks tab select this resources section and we're gonna add a new resource. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna select our remote network. And then I'm just gonna type in Synology NAS here. And then I am going to type in the IP address of my Synology NAS. So what's cool about TwinGate is you can select this port section here and you can actually restrict access to specific ports if you wanted to. So for example, I am just going to specify the DSM port at this point, but you can specify it by commas if you wanted to add multiple and you can even block access. So I'll block access for UDP and ICMP and this is just gonna allow me to access DSM. So if you had any uh, policies set up, which we'll look at in a little bit, you can change that. But as soon as you select this create resource option, what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna go through and it's gonna make you select who should access this. So I'm gonna specify everybody here, but this is the power of TwinGate. We created a resource and you can limit it down to a specific group to ensure that only specific users can access it. Now, you can do this for the same resource. So if you wanted everybody to access your Synology NAS on a specific port, but only individual users to access your NAS on the DSM port, for example, you can do that by configuring access groups. So I'm just gonna select everybody and I'm gonna grant permission at this point. And then we have everything configured. Now, if you want to use this for everything, so let's say I wanted to expose my entire local network, you can actually configure that by utilizing the entire subnet and then you can create the resource and you can say that everybody or whoever is supposed to have access to this. This would ensure that you have access to your entire local network. So for now, I'm gonna disable that and I'll show you this feature in a second. But at that point, our resource is configured. So what I'm quickly gonna do is disconnect from the network that I'm on and then I'm gonna to connect to an external network and then I'm gonna access the TwinGate Windows client to show you how this works. So with TwinGate disconnected, you can see that I cannot access my NAS. But if I actually go in and I click the little pop-up window here, it will actually allow me, if I select that resource, to authenticate. Now, as soon as I authenticate, what you will see is that I can access that resource. So we can now access our NAS. So one other thing to point out is that if you're trying to access a resource that is inside of TwinGate, meaning that you're able to access it if you can connect to it, it will come up with this little pop-up box here and allow you to authenticate there. So same idea, you have to go in and authenticate, but as soon as you do, you can access that resource. So one other thing I wanna show you here is I am on a test network and the router's IP address is 192.168.254.254. And what you'll see is that I cannot access it. Now inside of TwinGate, if we go back to our resources and we enable this rule that we configured earlier, you will see that we can now access it. So we couldn't access it before, but now we can. So that is how you can access your NAS on a specific port, on all of the ports, how you can access your entire local network if you wanted to. And this is just a general way that most VPNs work, but you have the benefit of a lot of cool features that we'll quickly take a look at. So we talked about it earlier, but the fact that you can configure high availability is just unbelievable. So inside of the connectors, you'll see that we have two connectors here. These are just default names that it gives. But what you can do is actually click into this, select Docker, create new access tokens the way that we did, put it on a different device. So you want it to be a different device other than your Synology NAS. It could be a Raspberry Pi, could be anything running Docker but you would then go in, set it up on that device, and then you'll have two connectors running for your home network. So what that means is if for whatever reason your Synology NAS shuts down, you will be accessing your local network on that other device. High availability, 
one device goes down, you can still access it on the other. So the other cool thing is that inside of the devices tab in security, you can actually create different security requirements. So all of these settings can be modified to actually allow you to have your clients use specific security features. And if they don't, they won't be able to actually connect to TwinGate, meaning they won't be able to access that device. This is extremely, extremely powerful and a really great feature that you don't normally have available. So it's not all good though, I wish it was. One thing I would say, and it's really an area that they can improve, is that you have to authenticate an extreme amount. Um, generally with a VPN, when you're using it, you authenticate to the VPN. And as long as that session's open, you're authenticated, you can access all your resources. With TwinGate, you get logged out a lot. So really what it's doing, it's, it's helpful from a security perspective because you have to authenticate in order to access your resources. It's just that it asks you to authenticate a lot. And what I found with the Android client is it doesn't allow you to authenticate with biometrics. If it did, you would be able to actually connect extremely quickly. Unfortunately, it asks you to log into your accounts. You have to go in, type in your account. If you're using Google, you have to authenticate that way. The point is that you are authenticating a lot more than you would with a traditional VPN. Um, I don't wanna say that's a bad thing because it's not, but it's something that you're gonna notice right away. Other than that, you'd have to basically go in, configure TwinGate based on whatever you wanna configure, whatever resources you wanna access, whatever security policies you have, but you have a bunch of really cool features that you don't traditionally have with a VPN. So once again, thank you to TwinGate for sponsoring this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks guys.